Hello 2D and welcome to your new unit. We're going to be studying quadratic functions in this unit and these are our unit goals. We want to be able to graph simple and transformed quadratic functions. We want to be able to recognize quadratic relationships and we want to solve problems using quadratic functions. Okay. So those are our main goals, our overlying goals for the unit. And we're going to start by trying to tell you exactly what a function is. So our topic of this particular lesson is functions. And our goal, I know what a function is and how to determine domain and range of relationships. So we've got a little bit of terminology going on here. We're going to try to talk about what a function is to start off with. So uh, what is a function? Uh, a function is a relationship or any mathematical relationship can be represented by a set of ordered pairs. And if you don't remember what a set of ordered pairs is, it's dots on a grid. So if I have a relationship, I can graph dots on a grid. And if that relationship, you know, if there really is a relationship, you'll usually see a pattern in the dots. The one that I've put down here, this particular relationship, looks like a linear relationship because it's following a dotted pattern. We're not going to be working with linear relationships for a lot. Uh, of this unit. We're going to be working mostly with quadratic relationships. And a function is a special relation where every x value has only one y value. In other words, each x value is unique. So we're going to take a look at what that looks like on a graph. And this says pick out the functions when given a graph. So when given a graph, we have to look along the whole length of the function and see if all of the x's only have one y. So I'm going to start by looking at this one. And let's say if I pick this x value, there's only one point on the line that has that x value. Say I pay, play, pick that x value, there's only one point on the line that has that x value. Okay. Now, however, this one over here, if I pick this x value, there are two points on that function that have that x value, okay. uh, which makes, which means that this is not actually a function. This relationship is not a function if I have two values of x, or two values of y for one particular x. Now, an easy way of looking at this is something called the vertical line test. And so the vertical line test is just this. A relation that passes a vertical line test is a function. A vertical line test passed over the relation must only ever touch the relation in one spot. If at any time it touches the relation in two or more locations, it is not a function. So I just happen to have a vertical line right here, and we're going to test this up here. I'm going to pass the vertical line over top of that red diagonal line, and you can see that it's crossing the line only once at any given time. So this one is a function. We'll give it a big check mark. Now the second one, if I put the vertical line over here, well, it touches it only at one spot there, but then after that, it's touching it two everywhere. So this one is most definitely not a function. It fails the vertical line test, and it fails it miserably because almost every point um, it touches twice. Almost every value of x has two different values of y. Now, going over to here, this one's looking good. Looking good, looking good, passing my vertical line, and uh-oh, now it's hit it twice. So even though this section of the, of the graph looked, was looking like it might be a function, as soon as I got there and it hit it twice, that's not a function. So we'll give it a big X. It fails this vertical line test. So now let's talk about domain and range. Oh, actually, no, not just yet. With a set of ordered pairs, picking out the functions is fairly straightforward. It's, and um, it's because of this thing here. Remember that each x value must be unique. So if I take a look at this, I have to look at the x's. I get a 5, a 3, a 6, a 1, and a 2. All of those x values are unique. Since all of those x values are unique, I don't have a problem. Uh, looking at b, I've got a 1, a 2, 
a 3, a 4, and a 5. All of those x values are also unique. So that one is a function as well. I don't have a problem. Now looking at the next one, I've got an 8, a 7, a 6, a 7, and a 3. Here we have an issue. I've got two values of 7, which means that for x equals 7, y could either equal 3 or 2. So for an x value of 7, y could he either equal 3 or 2, and that's not allowed if it's a function. Every x value can have only one y value, and this particular x value has two of them. So this one is not a function. Now we're going to talk about domain and range. When given a relation as a set of ordered pairs, domain and range are easy. Here's what the definition of domain and range are. Domain is the set of all x values, and range is the set of all y values. So if I'm given domain and range as just an ordered pair, all I have to do is list the x coordinates for domain and the y coordinates for range. So we're going to start with ordered pairs because the graphs are a little bit harder. So looking at this one, if I want the domain of this function, domain is all of the x values. And here's how we're going to list it. It's a set, so we have to use these squirrely brackets here for set notation. And we're going to order them in the correct order. So 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6. That's the domain of that particular function. That's all the x values. Now for range, we need all the y values. So all the y values are 2, 10, 10, 7, and 9. And we're going to put those in order as well. So we've got 2, 7, 9, and 10. We don't list 10 twice. Even though there's two 10s in there, we just list it once. So those are all the y values, and the domain are all the x values. So let's do it with the next two. The domain on this one, well, I just need to pick out the x values. The domain is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's already in order for me too, so I don't have much... Uh, much to worry about. And the range are all the y values. And the y values are 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. Whoops, wrong bracket. When you're doing sets, you gotta use set brackets, which are these squirrely brackets here. Now for part C, C wasn't a function. These are the same things that we were doing just up above. Uh, C wasn't a function, but we can still talk about domain and range. So domain is all of the x values. In this case, we got 8, 7, 6, 7, 3. So we put them in order. 3, 6, there's two 7s, but we only list it once, and 8. And for the range, we have 2, 3, 4, 2, 4. So we've got a 2, a 3, and a 4, then we got another 2 and another 4, so we only need to list those three things. Now, when you're doing domain and range on a graph, it's a little bit harder. Dating domain and range when given a graph is a little different. We need to look at each function first horizontally and then vertically to see where it begins and where it ends in both directions. Then we state this using set notation. So I'm going to give you a little bit of set notation. If I'm talking about domain, I'm talking about the x values. And I'm going to give you what this actually means, and I'm going to point to the, to the notation here. This means x is a member of the real numbers such that x is greater than 2. So I'm going to point to all of these. This in here means that x is a real number. So we basically say is an element of is what this little symbol means. An element of or a member of. This straight up and down line is such that, and this here means x is greater than 2. And we use the set notations, the squirrely brackets, when we're talking about a set of numbers. So now, domain and range, we got to try and figure out what we've got for these things. And remember, domain is all of the x's, and range is all of the y's. So we're going to have to examine this. I'm going to pull it up. Oh, my dots. Where is it? 
There we go. I'm going to pull those down so I can talk about domain and range underneath it. So we're going to talk about domain. I'm just going to use a D. Now this particular graph, if I look from left to right, I'm looking for any place where it starts or any place where it stops. And if I keep looking, these little arrowheads on the end means that it's going to keep going in that direction. So it's going to keep going to the right. It's going to keep going to the left. So this domain doesn't have any restrictions. It's just any real number will work. So we say x is an element of the real numbers. And we're done. And range, we have to look up and down for range. So I have to examine this in this direction when I'm talking about range. And I'm looking for if it starts somewhere or if it stops somewhere. And as I'm looking up and down, I don't see any starting or stop points. So this we say y is an element of the real numbers. And that's it. Now notice when I do real numbers, I put a double stick on the R. Don't let that bother you. It's an R with a double stick on it. Whoops. Okay. Now over here, again, to do domain, we're going to have to look left and right and see if there's any start or stop point. So as I look left to right this direction, um, I'm going to go along left to right. Um, maybe I should take my vertical line again. I'm going to take my vertical line and I'm going to look left to right. And as I'm moving left to right, that is a place where it stops or starts actually because usually, usually we go this direction. So there's a point that's causing me some issues and that is x is negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So after x is negative 6 then I have a line. Anything before x is negative 6 doesn't exist, but it goes on forever in that direction afterwards. So here's how we write it. We say x is any real number, but it's not just any real number because it's nothing over here. There's nothing over there that is part of our, part of our line here. So it's all of the x's that are greater than or equal to negative 6. And it is equal to negative 6 because this dot is right on negative 6. Now if I want to examine this for range, now I have to look at the y's. And I'm going to start it off by saying y is any real number such that. And now when I'm at the y's, I have to think about a horizontal line because I'm looking at this thing horizontally. So if I go from bottom to top, going from the negatives to the positive direction, I lose the function after there. So there, where y is 2, notice it's going through, through the 2 line there, where y is 2 is an issue. But anything before y is 2, all of the negative numbers, anything that is less than 2 is fine. So we say y is less than or equal to positive 2. Now, going along. Uh, this one down here is a bunch of dots, so it's a little bit different because it's not any real number. This graph doesn't have anything between the dots that's part of the graph, so it's not any real number. This time, if I want to do domain, we say x is any, and in this case, it's the integers. So x is any integer, but it's not just any integer because, again, if I'm looking left to right, and I'm going to draw my vertical lines, when I look left to right, my x's start there. As I look from left to right, that's the first place I get x's. And they stop right there. That's the last place I get any x's. So it's all the integers between those two values. Now this value here, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is negative 7 is where this starts. And it stops at 4. So what we say is x is any integer value as long as it's between uh, negative 7 and negative 4, or sorry, and positive 4. Now, when I write that down, and they need to be equal to as well, because we have dots on negative 7 and on positive 4. Um, so when I put this in here, I put the x between our two numbers. Always put the smallest number over here, the largest over here, and then your signs point the way to the small number. We have to use less than signs. This says that negative 7 is less than all of our x values, or equal to. 
And then the rest of our x values are less than 4, is what this whole thing here is saying. Now, how about for our y's? Well, when I talk about the y's, I have to look up and down. So I'm going to switch my vertical line into a horizontal line and, and put on my boundaries. So when I'm looking this way, this is the first place that I get any x's, any y's, any dots whatsoever. And now we have to find where our last place is, and that will be up here. So now we say that y is any real number, such that y is in between, well, what's it in between? This is negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This one is negative 5. So negative 5 is where we first get a y. And when we lose them again, that's 4, 5, 6, 7 at positive 7. So all of our, all of our dots are in this zone between negative 5 and positive 7. And, oh, I goofed. Y is not an integer either because it's a bunch of distinct points. Or Y is not a real number either. It's a bunch of distinct points. In order for it to be a real number, they have to be joined because all of these things in here are where we get our real numbers. If they're not joined, they're only integers. So here we go with this one. Let's try to box it in. I'm going to take my lines, and I'm going to take some vertical first. We're going to talk about domain first. So I'm going to move this over until I actually hit the function, which is right there. Then I'm going to take my next vertical line, and I'm going to move it over until I lose the function. And notice it keeps going. This keeps going, so I never lose the function. So here's what's happening here. For my domain, x is any real number, but I didn't get them until I got to negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I didn't get them until I got to negative 6. And then I have all of them that are after negative 6. So I say x is greater than or equal to negative 6. And I'm going to talk about that equal to here because this open circle means that actually it's not equal to negative 6. It means it gets really, really close to negative 6, but it's not actually equal to negative 6. So our range, y is any real number, and it's real numbers this time because it's not a bunch of distinct dots. So I'm going to take this and turn it into a horizontal line, and I'm going to go from bottom to top until I hit the function. But that's the first place I hit it. And then I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to do the same thing until I lose the function. So I'm going to go up here, and until I lose the function, still crossing the function, still it's going to go on forever. So I can't do that. I'm going to just stick it right here where I first find the function. So again, y starts at negative 2, and it goes on forever. So y is greater than or equal to negative 2 in this case, the equal to holds, because this is actually on the negative 2 line. Now I've got two more that I'm going to do, and then I'm going to release you. This video has gone a little longer than I wanted it to. My apologies for that. We're going to do the same thing here as we did before. I'm going to take a vertical line. Uh, that's not completely vertical. I'm going to take this vertical line, and I'm going to run it across the function until I hit it. There's the first time I hit the function. Let's clone it. Then I'm going to keep going until I lose it right here. And all of my x's are in between there. So this is how I write it. I say x is any real number. Uh, but it's not over here. And it's not over here. It's only in between those two points. x lies in between. And that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, negative 9, and positive 5. And again, it hits those points, so we need the equal to on there. How about our range? Our range is the y. So I'm going to switch those to our vertical, our horizontal lines. There's one horizontal line. Here's another horizontal line. This one I'm going to put where they start. This one I'm going to put where they stop. And I need all of the y's that are in between there. 
So at y is any real number um, starting at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, at negative 7, and ending at 2. And our y's are in between all of those, and they actually hit those points, so we put equal to. And lastly, the domain for this one, I'm not going to do the vertical lines anymore. Here's where it starts, and here's where it stops for our domain. That's going from negative 3 to positive 8. So we say x is any real number between negative 3 and positive 8, and I put my x in the middle, point the way to the smaller number. But we got to take a look. This one's an open circle, so at negative 3 we don't put the equal to sign. This one is a closed circle, so we have to put the equal to sign there. It actually hits the 8 there. And if I'm looking up and down, I'm going to do this one in red. If I'm looking, going from uh, the bottom to the top, this is where I first encounter my, uh, my function. And this is where I last encounter my function. So the range, y is any real number, but it starts at negative 3, and we lose it at positive 7. So it's all of the y's in between there. And this is a closed circle here, so we need an equal to sign there. And this actually touches the positive 7, so I need an equal to sign there. And that is it for this lesson.